so they did, that's why I said um, we have to talk about creative baton change. They, you know, where people are trained, uh, mentored directly or indirectly. Wow. And um, one thing that um, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and Freddie Hammond, they're not scared of bringing in people in to watch them, you know, because they're interested in to expand. Sure. Affinity Extra, be extra. Um, kick things off for everyone, yeah, because I want to um, just explain what optimistic means to me and what sounds of blackness means to me, and then we're going to go straight into you, and you're going to hit us with the stats, with the information, and all that stuff that we need to hear about sounds of blackness and what really was the engine behind sounds of blackness. Now, I was a 16 year old going, to, and I said this numerous times in the past. If you haven't heard me, I'll say this again. The weird thing is that I never came into, I never started into music because of church. Yeah, ironically mm. enough, I went to my cousin's mm. house who wasn't mm. a Christian and mm -hmm. he had this vinyl and this vinyl mm -hmm. was a gospel choir called Sounds of Blackness and it, mm. and it was optimistic and the, and the B-side was Testify and he was playing it on vinyl and he was showing me how to sample. And I and I just loved it, and I went I went on from there, and I became you know who Roger is today, still yeah, from Sounds of Blackness, and my cousin who was a Christian playing me that tune. Now, I, again, I have major influences, Andre Crouch, you know them things, which is fantastic. But I must say, yeah, the yeah, most, yeah. the one that really the, the group that actually pushed me into music as such was actually sounds of blackness i bought every single single what made it was so proud for me as a young man was being able to go into hmv and go and buy their singles to buy their singles and their singles also played had remixes that were dance you know what i'm saying you had frankie knuckles on there you had top dance djs and when i went to st kitts they were top of the dance charts you know what I'm saying? Not not no not no um gospel gospel charts or, or CCM. They were top of the dance charts, which was massive then. You seen that they were they were ramping with the likes of um the brat with Funkified, I remember at the time. And when you when, uh, and all them top guys there, sorry guys, I don't want to make make it sound like I just listen to hear me. But you have to see that, you know, for me, Sounds of Blackness, they they represented who they are. The first actual gospel group from america that i ever saw live yeah uh, was sounds of blackness and it was a sheer excellence now everybody laughs at me because they all talk about i watched fred i saw commission when i was eight years old sorry i waited till i was 17 years old before i got to see sounds of blackness but what an experience and i'm excited to actually hear about sounds of blackness because sometimes um we in the christian world are very sterile starting with myself we're very oh we don't work with certain producers because they're not or jumping up on the stage and not for my church now sounds of blackness wasn't like that you know what i'm saying they worked with producers outside of that circle now brother kevin will bring us into how they transcended into certain circles and because these models are there for our choirs today are struggling to understand how to transfer the success outside it's not by changing lyrics it's maybe about techniques and who you're working with yeah anyway but anyway kevin let's go right. to it. so i'm getting so right. excited because um um sounds of blackness oh. means means a lot a lot to me um and you know um i wear my black panther t-shirt and everything like that still you because we hear about sounds of black <laughs> blackness and everything like that oh. so so sounds what kind of what kind of yeah. forever man what kind of forever but listen bro talk to me bro Be before everything started sounds before sounds about this where does it come from bro where did it come from well it is the part of the minneapolis sound according to jimmy jam and terry lewis mm -hmm. and Prince and so forth, that that um beehive of creativity and the the sound engineer behind it was a gentleman by the name of steve hodges who started his creative development as a sound engineer at a black label on the west coast called solar records mm. and oh, then yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, solar records I heard mm. yeah yes yeah um you know second time around he rec he did the sound engineering and that and on the beat goes on etc etc but when he went to minneapolis at the invitation of Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis when they created Fly Time um, Studio, which became a, a great beehive of creative activity. 
and they what made them successful they actually break Janet Jackson on the international scene with Control this is the first album here and we're just talking about the you know where, oh, right. you see it <laughs> yes. yeah yeah yeah, Control, my yeah man which, which produced about several million seller singles and number one so it was revolutionary okay, okay go on <laughs> then you have then you have um, Alexander and Neil with Criticize uh, which was a, a number one single and it came a big seller in the UK with a million seller and mm-hmm. also this one, this one as well, his first one. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So, so, so I, um, when I'm talking about the different uh, sound production, I always have an album, you know, to to re- to show. This was the Jimmy Jam's first album that that um, they produced that was a multi-million seller. It sold six million copies for Janet Jackson first time around, and it's forty years old. So let's move forward. Wow. <laughs> uh, before before um, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis became mm. big, mm. Uh, explosive, mm. they had the they had the mentorship. You know, just the word, the mentorship and guidance of Clarence Avance, who is the go- black godfather of music, the mastermind. You know, the the power the power broker who mm. created the deals, the negotiation. Yes, mm. you've got to understand that because it's vital. It, Vitally important, and uh, I treat if Lipton Bethel was around, I treat him as that. You see, the guys know the industry and know the contracts and know the loopholes and tell people to avoid certain things. And you know, when when Clarence haven't talked oh, yeah, to yeah. any white chief executive, they jump, bro. They literally jump. Mm-hmm. Right. Knows so, so, so he actually orchestrated the deal for. For because of the success of um, Control and Rhythm Nation, you know, Rhythm Nation as well. Mm-hmm. Before, because of the the success of those two albums, um, and also when they produced the hit record for Herb Albert, the co-owner of A and M Records, Diamond is a best friend. Diamond, best friend. Um, they actually was given a a label. They were actually funded it um a m records actually underwrite for them a label of their own which sound of blackness came out of sound of blackness came out of a black owned label aha aha right did you know that yes sir. did you we know need to that? own our things man we need to own our things go 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 okay oh, no, no. So, yeah so so listen to this now sound of blackness first album from it, we're talking about 91, mm-hmm. 1991 is mm-hmm. released 91 called The Evolution of Gospel, which has optimistic and optimistic actually mm-hmm. was a number one dance track in the US on Billboard. So it was a monster house. You know what I like about this track? It has the, 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 the percussion techniques, it's, it, it's flawless, it's a revolutionary. Mm-hmm. You ever listen to it, you listen to it, and the bouncing and the thickness of it, yeah, brilliantly recorded. And totally original. There was no, there was no dark single or recording mm-hmm. out at the time that could match that. It was a runaway. I was in America at the time. It was a runaway hit. What? Serious. Runaway. Serious. Uh, they, uh, the, the, the group actually received about three Grammys during the, you know, the, and also mm. um, Sound of Blackness as a, a music, um, music. Um, an ensemble or group rather they are 50 years old yes okay okay you know? okay 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 50 years old yes yes those guys been around this seasoned industry then this season eins and yeah 50 years old and it took jimmy and jam actually they're one of jimmy jam's most favorite groups with optimistic what a powerful track you know talking about struggle and that yeah um, yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> Yes. It, it, yes. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, um, Kevin. Would you say that it almost encompassed? It made a Negro spiritual kind of sounding choir. Yeah. It actually made them kind of, um, um, how can I say, uh, uh, relatable to everybody. You know what I'm saying? You could you can play that track to this very day. 
know what I'm saying? At a, at a family, a family reunion, a family gathering, a DJ will play their own tracks, whether they're Christian or non-Christian. It's just a, it has struggle, but it's not, but there's a positivity to it that's, that, 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 that lifts you up and it's not bashing you on the head about God, this, God, that, God, that, but it's just saying to stay optimistic and the vibe and the sound of it, you just have to dance and just be happy. And, and if you want to bring positive vibes in the place, just, this track was the track. Well, okay, if we look as, as far back as the 70s with New York Gospel Community Choir, they did the same thing. Um, they did the same thing with their optimistic tracks, which cross over into disco <laughs> and was in top of the charts, you know. Okay. Mighty Crowd of Joy did the same thing with Mighty Mighty High, which went number one on the dance charts, you know. Hmm. So there was, yeah, there was some... Um, I have a lot of things to tell you about gospel in particular to go back. <laughs> this is crazy. This is beautiful, man. This is crazy. Yeah, yeah because you got the you got the East Coast sound, mm. you got the West Coast sound according to um the Hawkins and Andrew Crouch and so forth. And then in the middle you got Minneapolis sound, you know, according to Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Wow. And matter of fact, don't forget Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis also produced a platinum album for Orlando Adams as well, platinum gospel album. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. Orlando Adams. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She, yeah, she watched. She had two albums with them: one gold and one platinum. Yeah, during the nineties. You know, uh, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis was. They were prolific and quite impacting to the industry. They actually, matter of fact, they influenced. They were so influential that. Um, um, Freddie Hammond actually went to the, visit their studio to just watch them production. He was mesmerized. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he started to build his creative model after these guys. And matter of fact, um, the um, the um, I forgot the name now. Sound of Blackness actually did some tracks and a platinum soundtrack. Platinum soundtrack. Uh, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis too, you know. Yes, they had some of their tracks. Yeah, because that's, it, that's something it, which I feel that, you know, in America where they had advantage over the UK industry, especially yeah. gospel industry, um, is that they... The US was doing a number of films, especially in the 80s and 90s, especially 90s. I remember my, my, my early years, yeah, in the early 90s. There's a lot of black, black, black films that they always had to, no matter how many hip hop tracks, no many R&B tracks they have to, they had to reach out to a, a, a choir to do. And Sounds of Blackness was the choir to do. They, 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 um, Joy um soul holiday right, yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. you know what I mean? they'll be picking out tracks from sounds of blackness because they were yeah. church tracks but were relatable yeah the thing about it with jimmy jam and terry lewis they understand the old um development and the psychology of music they understand it and how they were they were multi-instrumentalists they had a brilliant mm -hmm. sound engineer by Stephen Oddish, who, who actually worked with them for 17 years. So he understand the work procedures mm. and the work ethic. Mm. So he knew them, he knew how they think, back to front. So, so, and the thing about, you need to remember about Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, they did not repeat their sound. Each artist that was tailor-made. Tailor-made. Crazy. That's, that's the brilliant, that's the brilliance of these guys. That's why I said, Sound of Baptist to reach to the level of success, they have to, they, when they came together, with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, then it just let loose. Mm -mm. I remember the black label that they worked on, that they were contracted to, was called Perspective. The, the okay. title of the, the, the label title is interesting, Perspective. Mm. Mm. And, at, and at the peak of their gross earning, Perspective, they did about 10 million. Okay. Round, round, round 94. Uh, matter of fact, um, what is interesting as well, during the 90s particular, they, we, including the, the productions or soundtrack production they did, uh, they did about two or three soundtracks, which were platinum. And the black creators, in terms of LA Babyface and so on, and other, and um, Teddy Riley and so forth, did um and the other black creators in particular 
mm-hmm. did about over 30 gold certifications and platinum certification. There was 30 black <laughs> soundtracks from black labels and so forth that there was over 30 of them. So the 90s was the, the golden era of black soundtracks. Wow. You know, in the hood, etc. Yeah. You know. That's amazing. That's ama- that, 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 that's that, that's truly amazing. So you know we've so you you got you got these producers now. I'll be interested. I don't know if you know any stories of how did Sounds of Blackness get connect, connected to to Jimmy Jam J- Jams. These guys did these guys go selecting them or did they select them? We, we, what, do you know if anything about that process? So the the thing about it is that um, unfortunately, what we need to do is actually revisit it in part two. Because you can't really, you can't really summarize it. You have to talk about the process of Sound and Blackness before Jimmy Jam, who were the creative engine. You had Hannah and, and so forth, you know, the, the singers. You know, okay, singers. okay, right then, bro. Let's let's let, let's let's hit off. Let's let's get let's get to it. Where, where did Sounds about this? Do you want to you want to start 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 talking that story of Sounds about this fifty years ago? Where did it all start? What church was it in? A, was it um, in church? I, I, the only thing the only thing is that it has to be talked about in the next um, part program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I tell you what, go on, go on, go on. Tell you what, I don't waffle things. I I always make sure that my facts are rich, Brilliant. and quantified. All right, yes. all right, all right. You hear it first, people. Hear, hear it first. You can't, you, when, it, when it comes to music history, you can't rush it. I'm afraid it's because it, it, it has several different technicals mm-hmm. and impact. Does yeah. that make sense? No, no, make, no, 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 no. That, that makes total sense, and I think that, that that that's fantastic because I think that sometimes, like he says, you want you people come up with stories, and these stories go out, and it's not actual um, true fact. So going back to yeah. um, to Jimmy Jams now, we we're talking about you know. Um, uh these guys now and the sound behind sounds of blackness now one unique thing i saw about sounds of blackness was the ability to create have a have a true sounding track an album track but they understood the power of remixing which i've never really seen before or even after yeah it's very rare you see gospel groups really truly get their head around the remix market now at the time in the 90s it was crucial that you had singles but with the singles you had four or five different remixes now sounds Blackness understood that and the role with it now the whole single market and remixes was that just the culture of the time or would you say that is just down to relationships well, there, 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 there was the, the sample culture mm. where a lot of the new producers in particular was visiting the the rather early stuff from the previous recording pioneers like Curtis Mayfield etc and they were taking it and actually doing their interpretation of it and so it it actually evolved because um, a lot of people don't realize that mixing and remixing in itself is technical you have to be technical because there's sounds and levels and how to capture certain instruments and in, individualize them you see mm. uh, yes so there's a there's a it depends on which the engineer that you actually work with now as i said before steve rogers was one of the top uh, top five best sound engineers in the country mm. Mm. So, so, um, so they was able to to work with some. So you know, Steve Rogers would he work with all the single, all the single mixes and remixes? It's quite, quite possibly, yes, it's quite possible because, and sometimes Jimmy Jam might bring in some of his other key brethren from Time, Time, you know, Prince yeah. Group, you know, former Prince Group. So remember, it's a collection of musicians from Minneapolis and so on that they work with. It was a core musicians, just like Philly had a core musician yes, that was part yeah, of the that's fraternity. It. Also, Minneapolis had some core musician that was part of the Minneapolis sound. You mentioned yeah. Prince there, bro, because it's the first time you mentioned Prince. So Prince is a Minneapolis um, artist coming through them rank, ranks, and he is a, well, but, not only artist, he's a musician yeah, as well. He, yeah, he's one of the originator. And matter of fact, um, before Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, actually went out on their own they were actually sacked so to speak by prince <laughs> so prince let them let them go <laughs> wow that they um 
matter of fact, their first um, production, major production, with the, with the SOS band. Yeah, during the eighties. Okay, yeah. I, 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 me personally, I wasn't really a Prince fan, but Prince seems to have a massive fan base um, out there, and I, I didn't realize how big he was. And uh, you know, what I mean, how how big he is. Well, well um, you've got to understand that Prince was a multi instrumentalist. Mm. Um, he he played the bass much better than his bass player. He was at that level. <laughs> wow, uh, Prince is um, is as a one off creative entity. And that's why Stevie Wonder and Prince Jones and them were highly gutted when he died. Because if you understand him sonically, Prince is at a different level in terms of production. When you listen to Purple Rain and when you listen to uh, the other recordings that he did, um, they were absolutely original. You, you, he was difficult to copy. He was a masterpiece. Right? Mm. So, so you're coming at, and this is this is is it real important that you know you're coming from a, a where it's choirs producers you have mm. A, mm. a sound which is influenced by greats in your city and sometimes we have have bands that come out of our city and it has a massive influence and and raises the levels and give hope you can imagine you got groups in Minneapolis going oh we can't get out there because I mean when you see success stories like Prince um, because Prince for me. I hear more about Prince from my my white friends than I hear from my black friends. You know I me. Mean? You know. And oh yes, he was he was a Prince was um, a global icon. He was a crossover success. He was, um, uh, he, he was just one off. Actually, you got to remember his Purple Rain album soundtrack album did about close to 16, 17 million in the states alone. Jeez. That's a soundtrack album. Hey, this, look, during the 80s in particular, and uh, right into the 90s, the, the music that was coming out from our black brothers and sisters, mm-hmm. you know, Fred Hammonds and so forth, it was revolutionary because you have Kurt Franklin on um, Gospel Eccentric doing their thing, and then you have Perspective Records, Black Owned, doing their thing. Ooh, you know, Jeez. West Coast. You know, which Kirk Fran is from. Then you have uh, Minneapolis, which, you know, creating a, a sound of its own. Mm. And remember, remember also that on that same label, yeah, Mint's Condition. Ooh, mm. you, you, you're joking. Yes, Mint's Condition was produced by Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, bro. So you, when, you, when you talk about Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, they are the, they are at the present time, the most longest running black production team in history with 40 years of production. <clears throat> 40 solid years of production. And their music does not repeat itself. They're absolutely original. Mm. Yes. That's what I'm saying. And, and the number of guys that they sound like they've been working with are, 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 are yeah, well, the, absolutely the, the numbers, The numbers that, um, the numbers that Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis produce uh, with Sound of Blackness and Mint Condition and Janet Jackson, which, okay, Janet Jackson, um, Alexander album also came out of the black label as well. Mm-hmm. Cabal. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, so, so uh, is... distributed by CBS Records. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was Clara's other um, label. And he was, as I said, the godfather of black godfather rated by Quincy Joan and everybody is serious so, icon so, so you know with um so we're looking at this and we're looking at the foundations of of what's going on there and I think we again I want to come to more the application element as we as we as we come into the end of this this, this part here um, mm. um and we look we, we we looked into the we look we were looking at the scene that sounds of blackness was coming from but when you're looking at the scene and and I think, mm-hmm. w- w- how can we learn in the UK from these guys? And um, and I'm looking, bro, and, I, and one thing I can learn, and something I said to my colleagues, is ownership. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And, and, and if we have ownership, we'll be free to excel in what we do. Yeah? And, and, I'm, and, I, and, I, and I have to say to artists, let's own our sound. 
yeah let them come to our table let's not take them let's not beg off the table and we've continued on that is beg off the table of the of of the of the christian labels of 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 non-christian media and we've continued want to be want to be part of their networks not realizing if we had ownership yeah Mm -hmm. and um and the key thing is that i've learned this week is that in the u u in the uk and the us uh, in the christian world we do not uh, how can i say we do not praise i mentioned this to the other day in the phone praise our executives the guys that are high up who are making maneuvers in in the unseen world so like uh, it's all about the artists in the uk everything's about the artists the artists the artists the artists but quincy jones um, um and all these guys these la reads all these guys you know mm-hmm. you hear about all the time but they never go on the stage and sing but these guys are the power brokers these guys are the ones who direct the sound the movers movers and shakers shakers of the world you know and these guys are well known and i remember when kevin bond came over here um, yeah he's another one (laughs) yeah i'm saying so he so he these guys are movers and shakers which we do not celebrate in the uk and we don't push up and i'm not saying we're meant to be pushing up people's names and whatsoever but we had to show is that we, we we fail to realize where we can move this thing forward. We can move this thing forward with uh, we're backing, financially supporting our, our execs to walk into rooms and say, can you stop mugging off our people? This is our sound. These are our numbers. And we can stand strong by it, you know? And that's what I'm kind of learning out here. Because, bro, we've talked about Motown. We haven't even got no detail into Motown. We moved up to, uh, to Philly. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going, I never even knew a Philly thing was going on. Then we got to Minneapolis. And, bro, we haven't, yeah. we haven't even talked about Detroit when it comes to gospel. Oh, no, you know what I mean? No, Detroit, Detroit uh, gospel is according to the Winans and, and the Jones girls. And the Jones Girl's mother was a very outstanding gospel artist. Mm. And let us not forget, um, uh, of course, Freddie Alman and all the other creative entities that c- come out of there. Gospel. Because I heard Freddie Alman is yeah. Detroit. Detroit, and, uh, yeah. Um, Marvin Slide is from that part of the hemisphere. Yeah. Of yeah. The so, and um, Freddie Alman. <laughs> They talk about Freddie Am. Freddie Am was influential in actually mentoring and developing some of the artists that are hit makers today. Mm. Mm. Okay. So they, they, that's why I said um, we have to talk about creative baton change. They, you know, where people are trained, uh, mentored directly or indirectly. Yeah. Wow. And um, one thing that um, Jimmy Tam and Terry Lewis and Freddie Ammon, they're not scared of bringing in people in to watch them, you know, because they're interested in to expand. Mm. You know, when you think about him producing Touch of the Angel, what a masterpiece soundtrack. He did that. Mm. Okay. I'm, I'm sort of jumping the gun, but I'm just giving the old overall view. And um, I'm willing to go back and, and explore in Sound and Flatness because... <laughs> Yeah, you know, but we, 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 yeah, we, we, we need to actually look at the, the musicians behind the sound who worked with Jimmy Jam and also the ensemble of musicians that is part of the sound of blackness. They were excellent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Every time I think about optimist, optimist it's, um, it has so much levels. Mm. It has so many levels of cosmic mm. excellence, different levels. You just take away the drums, you just leave the percussion beat. And it's just, it's a dancing, it dances and it bounces. No, no, 100%. Yeah. It, bro, bro, it, 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 it oh. was an absolute powerhouse of a track. And, and, yes. and, 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 and I must admit, um, you had things like, um, I remember a track, I'm just going to try and find this up now. Uh, mm-hmm. The track is called um, Pressure. I'm sure yeah. it's Pressure Part One, Part Two. Um, I yes. can't remember which one was that was a right. hype on. Right. It was pressure part two. Yes, those singles. Uh, I think both of the both of those singles sold in excess of a, a probably six to seven hundred thousand, or maybe more. Actually, they were quite big uh, sellers, runaway hits, and um, yeah, and they're just a total revolutionary. 
uh, well, massive. It goes on forever. It yeah, goes yeah, yeah, on yeah. forever. No, no, no. I'm, that... I am. I am sorry that I didn't get a chance to go into detail. I wasn't too well, but I can get. Um, I can get all. Uh, I think what we need to concentrate, if we do revisit it, is to look at the musician behind the sound. You know, mm. you know, no, no, we're gonna re- we're gonna revisit it. So, so we look at it, the music, mu- the music, musicality of it still. Yeah. So, I'm gonna, bro, I'm gonna That's like, right. I, like I said, you know, bro, really appreciate the time and and really just giving us a um, a co- and this is what I'm saying. Success is not born from just an artist. Somebody get out of the bed and just just rolling through the bed and just coming with a hit and that's it. And we so in the UK think that success happens within 24 months. Success can take 10 years to get there, yeah. and it's scary to hear success taking that long it scares me going god does it have to do i have to i've been on this for decades you know what i mean and is it the success you know if i said to my younger self it'll take decades would i carry on this journey but he to show is the world the life everything says that it takes time you know what i mean and the yeah, best things um, take time yes right uh, you've got to remember the interesting thing about the u.s mm with some of the artists, some of the executives mentored these musicians from way back and yeah, yeah. decided that they want the ushers and so on to be hit makers. They decided and so they invested in them and they became powerhouse That's creative okay. entities. So um, uh, sometimes, as I said, it might look, for instance, you need to remember that Mary J. Bride came out of Uptown Records, which is black label with four, the 411 there's so many black labels during the 90s it's incredible wow. it's absolutely incredible. wow <clears throat> And, that, and that's hence why they can be movers and shakers at, um, at this time right now. And that's why you have massive ex, um, black executives, billionaire, um, millionaire um, black owners, because they had to fight and they struggled and they, and they, and they developed and they built on their successes. And the successes, they, guys, man, is for us to look into the history, man. But listen, yeah. Kev, our time has, our time has done. Uh, thanks again for your time guys we'll look back at sounds of blackness i will hopefully play the right track right now because i'm going to play the track which is i mean yeah yeah yeah. i need relief you know for the pressures you know absolutely classic i i, I play this track 24 7 all the time I, I just absolutely love it man but listen kev thanks for jumping in for us yeah and and listen yeah, um, we're going to yeah, detail we're, of the foundation yeah we're going to- yeah, we're going to next week. We're going into the old creative process. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the stuff and the engineer, how things actually ever evolved. Brilliant, bro. Okay. No. 100% brother thanks again bro and thanks for jumping in for us today bro and we're gonna hit this track and guys make sure yeah. that you like subscribe whatever you gotta do on youtube when you hear watch this video and make sure on top of that guys you look at our other videos in the past which is which is it touched so many things from teddy pendergrass yes i heard you heard it teddy pendergrass and we touched a bit about some of the jo- J- J- is it jason poison poison i keep forgetting his name you know what i mean um and james, some good james poison poison james. Uh, yeah, names that you wouldn't yeah. realize have been powerhouses in black music over the years from sheffield you know what i'm saying but here's a classic yeah. guys bless you kev yeah. thanks again man you guys peace ready for the love, tr- yeah peace. man peace and love brother visit us for updates and shows at affinityextra.co.uk 